Good day, people. So today we are going to be figuring out how do we do gradient descent with uh, linear regression in MATLAB. All right, so I think the first thing is I've just gone into MATLAB, created a new folder, and let's just go and create a new file, and we're going to call it dataset.txt, and let's go and put a little bit of data in there. So it's going to be very curated data, but then... Uh, in the end, we will actually go and uh, do this on a proper sort of data set. So our data, what's it made up of? So firstly, there's three features. I've kept them all the same, so we can understand the numbers when we're looking at them. And uh, yeah, if, you, if you've worked with gradient descent at all, you know that um, uh, these are the three features, and then that is the y value that took place. So it's one and a half. So you can see I've, I've kept it there so that the the gradient is sitting at around about one and a half. Eh? So uh, if we have two, it's three, three, the result is 4.5, six, etc. And then what we'll do at the end is we'll go and we'll, we'll say, okay, well, let's predict what the value is going to be for 666. Six, six, and we should actually come back with a result of nine. Okay, so that is the, uh, that is the data set that we're gonna be working with. Great, so our first table over here, uh, let me just save it, that's going to be um, main.m. So I'm just going to put in a couple of comments for what we actually want to do. So we first want to load the data set. The next step is going to be to go and split x and y. Uh, then we're going to want to uh, normalize our x's so that it's down to small figures otherwise the gradient descent will take too long okay once we've done that we want to add um, a column with uh, ones in it and that's to help with the hypothesis later okay hopefully that's spelled right okay and then we're going to now go and do our gradient uh, descent Okay, and hopefully we're going to come back with our best possible uh, theta that we can do. And finally, we are going to, or not, not finally, second last, we will uh, plot the costs that we get back to make sure that our gradient descent has worked correctly. And the last bit is we will then predict a value. Okay, so this will be in a couple of videos. And we'll cover the first few things up front, and then we'll get on to the next in a second video. Right, so that's a good start. So we know what we want to achieve now. So let's start with our data set, which we'll call DS. Uh, will be load, and our data set is going to just be data set.txt. Right, great. Now we want to split it into X and Ys. So if we ever look at our data set, okay, those are our Xs. These are our... Um, dependent variables and there's going to be three of them and they're very curated at the moment just so we can check our values and then this is the result which will be the y-axis right so if we go in there we can say x equals data set and what I'm going to put in is a colon for all rows of data but then I only want columns one two okay which columns do I want okay let's just go up and create an n for number of features Okay, because we're going to use this a few times. So we're going to say size of data set. Now it says the dimension. Hey, so we want the columns, which is dimension 2. Okay, but that size, then we need to do a minus 1. So we obviously want to get rid of the Y column. So we should end up with a result of 3. Okay, so that's that side. And then I can say here 1 to N. Great, so now in X, it's going to give us all the rows, but only columns 1, 2, 3, while the uh, Y will equal DS. And again, we do want all the rows, but this time we only want column N plus 1. Okay, so once we've got that, uh, let's just go and run it now and just see if we are working correctly. Okay, so if we have a look up here, so now that, now that I've actually run the program, let's, should we just see what's in N? So that's three, that's correct, there's three features. If I look at X, and there we go, we've got our matrix with our values. Okay, so normally you wouldn't get all these values the same, but we just want a curated data set, 
and y it's got our correct data in okay so the next thing we need to do is to go normalize the data so I'm gonna say um, x equals and we're gonna do a uh, normalize let's do American spelling so we're gonna normalize our um, uh, x data okay and I guess the other thing we can pass in here is possibly the number of parameters that we have okay so the reason why you want to normalize the data is you want to you know these are of sort of potentially fairly big values here they're small values but they would normally be quite big and you're trying to get them all to be a reasonable fit that sort of between minus one and plus one type range so that's why we do the normalizing all right so if i hit the save button there all right let's go and i'm going to copy that and let's create a function at the top here to normalize our data and we can put in the end hit the save button it should uh, offer to do normalize okay so our normalizing um, uh, function is going to be let's say in for norm and it's going to equal okay, i'm just going to put this in brackets and it's going to be x minus the maximum of x divided by the maximum of x minus the minimum of x all right so now keep in mind that we have what do we have here x so great you can see if i want to know well if i want to normalize this number i need to take that number then i need to minus the maximum which is five so that'll end up with being minus four but then i need to divide that by max minus min which is five minus one is four so then we want to divide that and what we want to see is each of these columns that happen to each of these columns here so we can use matrix manipulation for this so i'll show it to you on the screen here and then uh, we can see it in action as we go through it here all right and then that will be the end of the first part of this video so what i can do is say x equals so i'm just going to put in brackets let's put in the other set of brackets and we can say x minus the maximum of x divided by y minus the whoops the maximum of x divided by the minimum of x all right so there we go hopefully the formula is making sense let me just complete all the brackets all right now the other thing that we're going to need uh, for gradient later on when we try and do our prediction at least after we've done gradient descent is we need to be able to normalize anything that we're trying to predict as well so we actually want to send back a little bit more data over here so i'm just going to put square brackets so we can send back multiple um multiple ones and all right and we're going to send back a maxes vector or a, mat a maxes matrix and a mins matrix uh, or vector we'll see what they are soon and that will tell us uh, if we're trying to normalize later what we can actually you know, what we need to apply this formula to as well right so to get a list of the maximums of because i need the maximums of each column uh, you can see if i can just put in max x at the bottom here it'll give me now uh, if you just want to have another look that was x and we can see the maximums are all five so it's given us a vector here with uh, with that in and same thing with min x at the bottom here all right sorry min x and that's what i meant there we go so if i want to see okay what's the result of this over here so if i take that and i pop it in there okay um there we go x minus the max x so one minus five see is minus four so you can see it's calculated our figures correctly yeah hey? if we had to take let's just go to x one minus five is four so one minus the five is four okay so you can see it's calculated correctly there and let's see what we end up with here eh? if we take the okay we end up there max divided by min is is five and obviously that's uh, uh what's it five five divided by one does give us five so if we want to see the result of this so uh, keep in mind that this is going to be a vector or a matrix that we end up back with but i now need to go and divide each of these by five which is the result of this one here so i want to end up 
still with the matrix, but that each of these values gets divided by 5. So matrix manipulation will allow us to do that. And if I put that in there, there we go. We can see we've ended up with, um, oh, did I put a minus there? Sorry, that should have been a minus. I was thinking those numbers do not look correct. So let's just try that again with the correct formula. And... And let's just try that again with the correct formula. So if we uh, take that and we put it in there, oh, that hasn't quite given us the right thing because dividing on matrices, will you'll end up with one row or one answer per row. What we actually want to do is go and put a dot in there because we know that this is a matrix and it's going to divide by five, but we want to apply this to each of the elements individually in their matrix. So let's have a look. There we go. That looks better. So instead of ending up with a summed up result for each row, uh, each each element in the matrix now just got divided by 5. And this is what you want to see. You want to see that you, you have a value between minus 1 and a 0. So let's just go and correct it up here. Now the final thing that we want to do in normalization is we just want to get those maxes. So because we want to return those. So maxes equals max x and mins equals min x. So this is just so that we can use it later when we try and actually do our prediction. So if I go back here now and let me just clear things at the bottom here and hit the run button, uh, let's see what we end up with. So at the bottom here, if we end up with x, there we go, we can see we've got x is now our normalized values. And uh, if we, whoops, I think I didn't have everything on there. So let me just go back here and correct this. And we've got our maxes and we've got our mins. So let's just run it again. And uh, if we put in our x, great, normalized values, perfect. And those are correct. Eh? If you look at the actual data, if this was minus 1, that would be minus 0.75 etc all the way up to 1 and if we look at our uh, maxes there we go that's got our maximum values and our mins that's got our min values all right so uh, have a cup of coffee and then come back and we'll continue now looking at gradient descent